Air pollution. No, we're not going to do them all. So, Summer pictures. a review. <laughs> this, you don't, you don't have to refill these. These are already in your notes, but just to go over them again, what, fill in any blank for me. Nitrogen. Nitrogen. 21%? Oxygen. Oxygen. 1%? Argon. 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 CO2. Good. And all other greenhouse gases, which we're going to focus on in this unit. All right, let's work backwards. See if you could do it. Tell me about the ionosphere, exosphere. It has, ions. has ions. ions. Thermo? Hot. Meso? Cold. Cold. And then this is our focal point for this unit, stratosphere and, therm and troposphere. What is the only thing we're going to learn about in the stratosphere? Uh, Ozone. 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 <laughs> That's <a> Ozone. <laughs> and then in the troposphere, we're going to learn about greenhouse gases, um, we're going to learn about almost all weather patterns and climate uh, is directly correlated to that. And then these are the other things you want to review. But we're focusing on troposphere for the majority of the unit. And then uh, the, we're going to talk about ozone. And hopefully you'll never confuse the two. Let's say GG slash greenhouse gases. What's GG? Greenhouse mm -hmm. gases. Greenhouse gases. Greenhouse, greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases. <laughs> all right. So let's define what is air pollution. Who could fill in these blanks for me? Oh, harmful chemicals. Harmful yeah. chemicals. And we're going to say substances because you're going to learn that some of the, the harm comes from something that's not really a chemical, just maybe like a particle. And they're going to build up in our atmosphere at a level that they consider it to be unhealthy or, or cause harm, direct harm. How does, um, or this is a statement, whenever something blank pollutes enter the atmosphere. Yes. Good. So uh, pollutants can be naturally occurring or uh, from human activities. And here are just some examples. So what are some examples of naturally occurring pollutants? Fires, volcanic eruptions, dust. This is actually something that's very uh, highly... Uh, it's a problem. Like a lot of times now you go to the doctor and they talk about allergies coming from this. Pollen. 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 Good. Because pollen. pollen is leading to a lot of allergies. Yeah. And then human activity all started around what? Industry. industry. During the industry, which led to a lot of factories burning and during the manufacturing of goods and more so the burning of fossil fuels, we have excess levels of chemicals in our atmosphere and they and they mainly come from this <laughs> so as lauren mentioned the wildfires in california look at the title of this article one week of wildfires is polluting the air in equivalent to a year worth of cars in the streets of california that's how much pollution can come from a naturally occurring uh which really do we call this natural? And this is where you got to start to think. Shh. Our, our excess warming of, or our, our problem with our climate is leading to droughts, okay, which lead to excess dryness in areas that shouldn't be and excess heat because temperatures are so severe and drastic, and then that leads to fires. So, so is it natural? Yes, but at the same time, it's caused by things we've done. All right, so moving on. I want to keep this slide up here, really important. I don't know if this is in your book or not, but one year this came up on the AP exam and they referenced um, not just natural and um, human-made pollution, but they use these words, natural, area, stationary, and mobile. So natural is what we just talked about, you know, things that happen nat in nature. Area is, so there's going to be pollution coming from uh, like a city in, in heavy levels. Like if you have farming, you're going to have excess pollution of nitrous oxide. And that's because for, you have excess fertilizer. Stationary can be industry polluting. So you're not really um, talking about transportation or movement because that's mobile, but it's still polluting the atmosphere uh, from an industry related source. And then you've got transportation and or what they call mobile which is airplanes trucks trains anything that moves something is going to burn fossil fuels to do it and it's going to produce excess amounts of pollution 
So know this diagram, okay? Wait, light. There's two main groups of pollutant. Primary, they're going to enter the atmosphere directly. And again, it could be naturally or human-based. And then secondary, all you have to know is that it's when primary pollutants mix. So underline the word mix because you're going to take those primary pollutants that we're going to talk about now. We're going to talk about six of them. And then when those mix with each other or with something else, they form secondary pollutants. All right, so I'm going to go over primary pollutants. Now, I'm going to list six of them. There is, in your book, only five. And I'm going to tell you why. And this is the main, uh, well, I'll tell you why in a minute. The main source of these pollutants. So all the pollutants I'm going to talk about come mainly from this. What do we call this? 38 and 21% at 23% comes from what? Mobile. Good, mobile. What we call mobile, transportation. On the road or off the road. Make up 60-something percent of all primary pollutants. Or, or contribute the most, I would say. Because automobiles will produce every type of primary pollutant. But if you look at all our primary pollutants, their main source comes from transportation. Second is any kind of household product, and then last is industry. So things you do in your home, like paints and solvents, cleaners, um, all those fumes can produce uh, pollutants. And uh, when we manufacture goods, pollutants are produced as well. So this, this carbon dioxide in your book is not considered a primary pollutant. And the reason is, if you look at the definition of pollution, it says that you're putting a chemical in excess somewhere that's going to cause harm to, to, to you. Carbon dioxide doesn't harm you, okay? Why is it sometimes considered a primary pollutant? Number one, it, it fits half of the definition. It's directly emitted into the atmosphere. Excess amounts of carbon dioxide are leading to global warming or climate change, so technically there's an indirect effect to our health and other organisms' health, okay? So there's like a debate, is it a primary pollutant or it isn't? I'm going to call it it is, but remember that it does not lead to any health risks directly, okay? You have to remember how carbon dioxide is produced. 93% of carbon dioxide is in excess in our atmosphere, I mean, it enters our atmosphere through the carbon cycle. Things like burning organic matter, volcano, permafrost melting, oceans, decomposition, respiration, all produce carbon dioxide. Remember, the oceans dissolve carbon dioxide, but they also release it, okay? The reason why carbon dioxide is an area of concern is because of what? What made it in excess in our atmosphere? Industry. Especially what? What produces the most carbon dioxide beside the cycle? Burning what? Fossil fuels. BFF is going to be the answer to a lot of things now. Transportation involves burning of fossil fuels. Electricity production involves burning of fossil fuels, okay? So the burning of fossil fuels has led to an excess amount of chemicals in our atmosphere. So for each gas, I'm going to tell you problems that are associated with the gas, okay? Health-related and environmental. In, in this sense, I can't give you any health-related issues because carbon dioxide doesn't affect your health. But I did want to show you this graph. The, the red line is carbon dioxide levels. The, the blue line or purplish line is temperature. And you see there's a direct correlation that they think that CO2 is definitely an indication as to why we have global warming or now known as climate change. And I want you to know that it's not because global warming is not real that they renamed it. It's climate change because global warming is one little part of this problem that we're having with our climate, okay? Cold weather or extreme cold weather that you're experiencing now, notice what I'm saying, extreme weather. That's a direct result of climate change. Extreme cold, extreme hot. And I'm going to show you a lot of graphs so you can see how we've been having a lot of those like high levels or low levels extremes of temperature and precipitation throughout the country or the world. Gas number two, carbon monoxide, okay? For each one, I'm going to tell you uh, odorless, colorless. Try to think of odorless, colorless for all of them, except the ones I tell you that have odor, okay? This one's unique because it's poisonous. I mean, it's fatal if uh, inhaled. 
Anybody know how it's formed? Good. Not enough oxygen reacts, but it's really what ends up happening is there's an incomplete burning of carbon. So whenever you see ash, <laughs> like cigarette smokes, fireplaces, right? You have an incomplete burning of carbon. Main source is, is transportation or uh, car exhaust to be exact. So if you see that question on the test, car exhaust, you want to link it to carbon monoxide. Um, and, and it is fatal if in excess, excess. So there's like small levels. So um, the reason is because uh, it, well, I'm going to show you in a slide. It binds to your hemoglobin. So instead of you being able to breathe, you actually like suffocating yourselves. Number three is nitrous oxide, or I'm going to, I'm not going to say nitrous oxide. I'm going to say oxides of nitrogen because literally that's the way they reference it on the AP exam is NOx. Okay. You don't have to know the specific one. You want to know it's colorless and odorless. You want to know that it comes from the cycle like we studied before. So decomposition and burning of organic matter will all produce uh, nit nitrogen compounds into the atmosphere. Major source, and if you see this pie chart here, it kind of confirms it is auto and burning of fossil fuels. And in addition, you want to remember what from farming produces a lot of nitrogen. Uh, Fertilizers, good. So runoff would put it in the water. <coughs> Excess fertilizer doesn't get used up by plants, so it ends up back into our atmosphere, and then it becomes, a, you know, a pollutant system. All right, sulfur oxides or sulfur dioxide, colorless, not odorless, sulfur smells. So try to remember that because that's the difference. One third of the sulfur comes from the cycle. So the, uh, a big chunk comes from the cycle, but the majority of excess sulfur in our atmosphere is directly linked to, nope. What fossil fuel? Coal. Coal is our dirty fossil fuel. That's mainly made up of sulfur, and it produces 90% of the sulfur in the atmosphere. Is burning coal, which is done to produce electricity. You either burn coal or you use nuclear power to make um, electricity in your home, and uh, coal is full of sulfur. All right, sulfur and nitrogen, I, I left the problems together because both sulfur and nitrogen are huge contributors to a major global air pollution problem, which is what? Yes, definitely respiratory, irritation health-wise, but what global air pollution problem is directly linked to sulfur and nitrogen? No. Nope. Yes, acid rain. And also smog is another one, which we're going to talk about both of these. So volatile organic compounds, which are going to be called VOCs. When you see the word organic compound, what do you think of? Carbon. Carbon. Most of my organic compounds are hydrocarbons, and they're going to be caused by evaporation or incomplete burning, again, just like carbon monoxide. Main source, again, transportation and burning of fossil fuels. But in addition, all of these things down here contribute to volatile organic compounds. What are they? Paints. Paints. Mm -hmm. Cleaning products. Aerosol cans, so spray paint is one of them, and your dry cleaner, correct. Volatile organic compounds are actually one of the most, like carbon monoxide, definitely deadly, right? Because it's poisonous. But volatile organic compounds affect major organs like your central nervous system and your immune system are shot. It leads to kidney and liver damage if it's like, again, in excess. And then like every other one, it's going to irritate your nose, eyes. Your typical pollutants cause dizziness, nausea, and anything that's in your air that's not a chemical is kind of particulate matter, like hair fibers. We call it dust. Yes, right? It comes from fires. It comes from a lot of things, but main sources naturally are going to be wildfires, dust, and sea salt. And then from human sources, we're going to say any industry especially burning of fossil fuels, mining, cars, of course, always going to contribute. And then you think of roads. So the cars are constantly 
removing p particles from the road. Think of when a road is made, it's black, and then it's gray within, like, what, three days because you lost half of the road? 